for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since uh, Alexis de Tocqueville was brought up uh, at the beginning of this meeting, I wanted to tell you that as someone who is a big fan of him, and uh, actually his books should be recommended reading in American schools, they were recommended reading in post-Soviet uh, schools when I live back in Ukraine. It's probably his big, one of the big reasons why I'm in Congress today. I wanted to quote him quickly. He said, the American Republic will endure until the day Congress discovers that it can't bribe the public with the public's money. I think it's a very valid statement. But go back to, uh, to the discussion today. I actually uh, add my name uh, to this bill because I believe I would like to have a bipartisan discussion on that issue. And I believe there is still some work to, work to do, but I appreciate Congressman Cicilline and Buck working on this. And I think this is, we had some uh, discussion, what is potential issue could be? Could we actually give more power for collusion from some larger stakeholders in this industry? Or we can have um, also, you know, more dictatorship of opinion and excuses why some of the um, people are not, or media uh, is not really presented, well presented on this big search engine. So my question is, uh, what are the ideas and thoughts you have? And I know maybe we should go further. When I work on the reform and healthcare, we had a lot of issues with uh, employment, uh, non-competes provision between hospitals and doctors and some of the reporters brought up similar issues in uh, media industry. So uh, we also need to look at the proper due process for appeal. We see what would happen with Parla and some other uh, conservative applications or even some other applications that try to get on this platform. So my question is for Mr. Travis Greenwald and Smith, if you can quickly just say, what are the things we really should look to make sure that we do not have this piecemeal approach and can create some unintended consequences. It's a, a really broad question, and, uh, and I think it's a really important question as well. To me, what we need to have first and foremost is regulation of the big tech companies. I think Mr. Smith has done a really good job of elucidating that this is not a one-size-fits-all policy, and there isn't any one thing you can do that solves the larger issues in our democracy as it pertains to the power of big tech. What I see, and I can speak to specifically for myself and the company that I run, is there are lots of companies like mine that the difference between making money and losing money is what the algorithm that Facebook chooses to put into play on any given day is. And the consistency of the rules that are being applied in a content neutral fashion does not exist. And the power there, we have effectively given over, I truly believe this, the right to determine what a First Amendment violation is out of our courts, and we have given them to the big tech companies instead, and that represents a chilling effect. Because I'll tell you this right now, the business side of my company, they said, hey, I don't know necessarily that we want to share internal data and upset Facebook and other tech companies because they have the ability to vice grip control in many ways businesses. And there are tons of them that are going to watch this clip and they're going to see the data that we shared and they're going to say, hey, that happened to us too. We didn't say anything because we hoped it was just going to go away. So I think it's not a fair fight right now and the fight needs to be more fair. And to me, ultimately, that's what government's job should be. Create the standards and fair play to allow a fight to be fair in this industry. Thank you. If you can, Mr. Greenwald and Mr. Smith, add quickly, because I want to yield some time to Congressman Issa, too. Can, can I just say... I can, I can just go... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I, I would just say very quickly, in terms of additional ideas, one, consider the additional measures that should be put into the JCPA, borrowing from parts of the Australian law. Two, Focus on the lack of competition in the digital advertising market itself because that's where most of the advertising revenue and profits are being trapped. Three, think about the conversation before about the needs of communities of color. Uh, I think there are a lot of ideas that could be pursued there. And fourth, look, there is this big issue. It's sort of called modernized Section 230. And you know, if we're ever going to get everybody together and thinking about this, we probably have to think through that piece too. Thank you. I would just quickly say that I first would encourage the minority members of the committee to really look at that report from October because I think there are a lot of solutions in it that address 
uh, the primary concerns that are being expressed. And very quickly, until short of that, of breaking up these companies, I think you could apply First Amendment law or other requirements of content neutral uh, moderation along with an appeals process oh, yeah. based on the reality that these companies are mm -hmm. monopolies and people rely on them for their livelihood and for their expression. I thank the gentleman. Thank you. I, the gentlelady's time is expired. Are expired. you back? Okay, uh, see, I don't see my time. Thank yes, you. I'm sorry. Yeah, your time expired. You actually went over 20 seconds, but happy to accommodate you. I now recognize the gentlelady from Georgia, Ms. McBath, for five minutes.